of you. If you are, if I am aud audible, yes, in the chat box you that's can audible. write. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, that's nice. That is nice. Yeah, yeah. And we, we'll, yeah, and a few ground rules before we, you know, proceed. Uh, <clears throat> what I plan to do today is a little bit of SPSS, share a little bit of my knowledge with you, <clears throat> and. Uh, uh, uh what we shall do is uh, as, as it is usually the case the best way to learn any software is to actually start working on the software so that is exactly what i plan to do i will share my screen i will have an exercise uh and then we'll i'll work out that exercise on my screen and you can watch that on your screen uh because i will be sharing my screen and then i'll give you uh, enough opportunity to work it out on your machines so that way you know you uh, you can also i don't know if any difficulties that you might have uh, and uh, in case you have any doubts uh, you have all, there is always this option of uh, raising the hand which google meet provides otherwise you can also type in the uh, chat box that is also available now uh, can i uh, some i think i have some around 25 people have joined uh, Yes. Can I uh, can I uh, can I know how many of you have the software with you? Uh, you can just type on the on the uh, chat box saying yes I have or something like that, so that I know how many of you have the software. So I will you know proceed accordingly. Yeah. Do you have the software with you? Yes. One, two. Yeah. Three, three, three. Yeah. What about others? That is four, five. Yeah. Six 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 yeah only six seven yeah seven seven eight yeah okay 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 uh yeah and the others i hope i have got eight yes i have okay that is the ninth one ten yeah and i hope the others also have the software with you because otherwise you know this uh the entire thing we might yeah that is nice yeah the eleventh one otherwise the entire thing might look like a movie and it may not uh, ultimately register Okay, now we have two hours uh, this afternoon, and you already had one session yesterday. Uh, I will roughly pick up from uh, where uh, the resource person had uh, left yesterday, uh, by and large, uh, and then uh, uh, I'll pick up from there and then proceed. So uh, what I plan to do is uh, the first the first hour, roughly forty five minutes or so to one hour. Uh, I will take a small exercise and then I should share that exercise. Uh, this is about creating a database in SPSS. Some of it may be you know, familiar to you, some of it may not be familiar to all of you. And what I've understood is uh, this is a very diverse group, which of course adds value to the entire uh, entire group. So this is a very diverse group. So we will, I will go, I will try to meet, you know, speak in a way which is uh, domain neutral. So it's not necessary that you have to have some orientation with mathematics or maybe you have to be mathematically oriented to understand uh, this particular software. Uh, that is not the way. So I will try to analyze, uh, explain things in a manner so that it is uh, understandable to everyone. Even then, if you have doubts, you can, of course, uh, raise a hand or uh, and I'll give you an opportunity or you can type on the keyboard. That can that option is always there. So as I said, first 45 minutes to 50. Uh, to one hour is basically you know trying to create an SPSS database and the other one the last half will be about you know descriptive statistics frequency distribution how to use how to create tables graphs then uh, this McNamara test and of course about chi-square test and the Fisher's test so that will so we have a lot to cover basically that is the plan for the day uh, what I'll do is I will shut off my uh, camera uh, just to preserve bandwidth and then uh, I will share my screen and uh, and I'll explain uh, what has to be done. Yeah, so there my camera goes and
Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, yeah, what I have is, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. I hope you can see all of you see. Yeah. So basically, <laughs> see when because you are all researchers, that's what I um, I gathered, which is very nice, of course. <laughs> and uh, this software SPSS is a very user friendly software. Uh, it is not one of those where you have to know a little bit of programming where, you know, one additional comma <clears throat> or an additional full stop could make your entire comma, your entire program not run. And then there is nothing like that in SPSS. It is basically menu driven and uh, uh, it is easy to understand. Uh, it is easy to, easy to follow. Uh, initially, uh, you might have a few hiccups, but uh, as you go along, these are all ironed out. So you don't have any issues. And the best thing is, please don't bother about the uh, software. It doesn't crash. I mean, you know, I have never heard that because someone has clicked something which was not intended. Yeah, then the software has crashed. I've never heard anything like that in my life. So therefore, even if you are, let's say, not so sure about the workshop, uh, about the software, uh, you can very well, uh, you know, work on it. So that is not an issue. Achha. By the way, uh, yes, uh, how many of you uh, do have some orientation to so uh, this particular software SPSS, can I have a have an idea so that I can pace myself accordingly? If you have, please say yes. If you don't have, there's no need to say no. If you have some orientation, yeah. Can I know how many of you have some orientation to SPSS? Uh, yes. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, okay, Doctor Bismillah. Yes. Uh, so that one. Yes. Two. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay, okay. So rest you rest of you rough, roughly, yes. Roughly are all you know are all beginners. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. <clears throat> now when you, because you are all researchers, so therefore what is important for you is to oftentimes you have to do some data analysis. Now in data analysis, what do you uh, what sort of data do you deal with? There are basically two uh, sources, as you know, primary source and secondary source of data. Uh, there are many secondary sources, lots of data is available on the net, you can download and work. That is something that you can always do. <clears throat> uh, the other thing what uh, which often happens is uh, you have, uh, you are required to, uh, you know, opt uh, uh, collect a customized database uh, suited to your requirements, the objectives of your research, your thesis, your paper, your project, and then uh, you will, you will be required to analyze their data and prepare a report or a paper, whatever. So, uh, so if you have a, if you are collecting data on your own, you will also have to create a SPSS and database out of that. So, <clears throat> uh, SPSS database out of that. So, therefore, uh, what we shall do is uh, try to learn a few essential elements. I will not have time to cover everything, but a few essential elements of creating an SPSS database and thereafter do a few minor things on that and then go to the next part of my uh, of today's lecture i had circulated uh, i had requested the organizers to circulate a spss data file uh, has it, uh, do you have it with you i had uh, requested the organizers to to circulate an spss data file This has circulated already. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. We have received the data from Tracker, sir. Yes. Sir. Ah, excellent. Excellent. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Am I going? If I'm going too fast, do let me know. Uh, otherwise, you know, uh, this is fine. If, uh, and you know, important thing is you must all understand whatever I am saying. Right. So what you see on the screen is a dummy database, of course. Huh? Okay. It's a very small one. <clears throat> it is about some cancer cancer patients. And uh, you can see that for each of these cancer patients, uh, some uh, data on certain fields have been collected. So patient, you have patient ID number, then age, and then gender, then height, then weight, monthly income. There is something called the histologic grade, then a receptor status, tumor size, duration in months, then family history of cancer, yes, no, daily exercises, yes, no. Something like this has been created. <coughs> Now, we have to create a database out of it, uh, an SPSS data file out of it. <clears throat> right. Now, um, before we uh, SPSS, before we proceed, I'll have to tell you a little bit about 
uh, about variables and yes in the software spss they don't really use the word variable they use the word uh, they use the word uh, measure so i'll tell you a bit about that measure uh, and then once i come out of it then i will explain how this particular database not the entire thing because we don't have time will uh, this this uh, data can be entered into the spss software and the software and the spss data file can be created okay now let me tell you about yes and now yeah if you can see here yes <coughs> now in when you work with the software spss basically you come across three terms uh, types of variables they uh, they call it they don't use the word variable they use the word measure so in the spss software you will come across nominal measure you will come across ordinal measure and you will come across scale okay these three nominal measure ordinal measure and scale measure <coughs> now please please uh, uh, take it from me that uh, it is very important to understand uh, what these measures constitute because uh, depending upon how you have classified a variable, either as a nominal measure or a, a scale measure, etc., uh, you some of the procedures may be available, others may not be available. For example, if you are interested in uh, in in category in correlation, now it is it is necessary that uh, all that both the variables are of the type scale. It is not that otherwise also it cannot be done. In some cases it can be done. In some cases it cannot be done. But you will end up with wrong, you know, wrong conclusions, having used the wrong method. So it is important to understand what sort of what uh, sort of what these measures are. Basically, what are the three types of variables? So in general, we all know that uh, variables can be very broadly classified into two types. One is what is that? Please click on the hide button for clear, visible all part. Is okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah, okay. Right. <clears throat> okay, so where was I? Yeah. So, uh, yes. Uh, basically, we know variables are of two types. You have uh, 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 variables that we learn. Just a minute, this software has got stuck up. Yes, yes. So basically, there are two two, two broad categories. Uh, uh, you have something called Right, uh, just a little problem with the machine. Yeah. So uh, basically, data is of two types, qualitative and quantitative. <coughs> and uh, that must be all know, uh, except that in the software, this quantitative uh, variable, any variable which uh, any, any variable which measures an entity, uh, which can be actually measured. 
which can be actually measured that is a scale measure like you know if you measure if you measure someone's weight if you measure the weight of if you measure the speed of a uh, speed of a car <clears throat> so that is a scale measure and that, so that is a that is a scale measure and what is a qualitative data where you know you cannot measure but you can qualify categories often times qualitative data is of ca of categorical type yeah, of often types qualitative data is of categorical type. So, <clears throat> uh, if you have categories, then SPSS will further. Uh, as we, SPSS doesn't use this word qualitative data. It will actually use these term, terms called nominal and uh, terms called ordinal. Right. <clears throat> <clears throat> now, uh, what is a nominal a nominal measure or a nominal variable? So, basically, any variable which collects data in terms of categories. So I've given an example here, gender or sex. Usually we are used to say, used to two of these, male and female. So either someone is a male or a female. These days we you have a third category, transgender. But broadly, most of us most of us either classify ourselves either as a male or a female, right? So you, that is why in the brackets I wrote two. I have given another example here. This is about blood group. So you have A, B, A, B, and O. Now, <clears throat> Out, now, this is uh, this sort of nominal measure or nominal variables. This is categorical. This ordinal measure is also categorical. But what is the difference between the two? The difference between the two is in case of nominal measure, please, un uh, what was that question? Or a qualitative data can be shown on dummy variables. I'll come to that. Yeah. I'll come to that. Now, yes. Now, important thing is for nominal variables, there is no ordering between the categories. So we don't say that males are females males are better than females or females are better than males so therefore if you have a if you have a variable where the categorization is such that there is no natural ordering between the categories then that particular variable is to be termed as nominal it, this should be n o m i n a l they, this this is not m there is a spelling mistake here n a l right nominal right and uh, there is this problem, yeah. And then ordinal, ordinal measure is also where the or response of the variable is categorical. That much is fine. But there is some sort of a natural ordering between the categories. Like if you collect data or if you are collect, if you are classifying respondents on you know standard of living, someone in and and you are and you classify each respondent as you know high income group, middle income group, and low income group. So now you can see that there is a natural ordering between the categories, which is quite distinct from a case of gender where you have males and females but there is no natural ordering so therefore in this uh, stand this uh, standard of living that variable that variable will be an ordinal measure okay that is important and what is scale this is scale measure is a quantitative variable any any quantitative variable that you have please understand that we will that in <coughs> spss they will use the term as uh, you know scale measure having said that this must must have been uh, must have been known to all of you just a recap so that you know I, when i go into the software it becomes easier and quicker right <clears throat> now what shall, what will be what shall we do so i will ask uh, all of you to open up your software right and uh, when you open up the software our task now will be to do this actually if you can look here i hope it is visible uh uh this we'll have to enter this the above data in a spss data file so create a spss database that's what we'll have to do so we will not do all the variables we'll do some just to give you a flavor of how it has to be done and the rest of it of course you know as you go along as you practice more you will get to know all that okay <clears throat> so if i open up the spss software so if i open up spss software so new data new. okay uh, so if i open up an spss software uh, you know uh, this is what it will look like so uh, those of you who are familiar with excel you will recall that this uh, looks pretty much similar to excel even though there are very pretty much similar to excel in terms of the, you know this rows columns and cells but beyond that, of course, there is a lot of difference. So we'll, uh, we'll discuss all this. One important thing is, uh, difference is, in Excel, <coughs> you have just one view. Uh, you open up the software, and then there is this, uh, uh, there is that worksheet in front of you. And whatever you do, uh, 
uh, whatever you work out, whatever results you have, all of that are actually displayed, embedded on the particular uh, on the particular worksheet in Excel. Right? Uh, SPSS is different, of course, because the results will come in another window. So you know, yesterday first session, you must have noticed that. So when you open up a software, uh, open up the software, you will have two tabs. One is this data view, and the other one is that variable view. And you you will recall, it must have been discussed yesterday. That in data view your data is present, and in variable view, you know all the characteristics of the variables are present. Just to explain more about what is this, see this is that particular uh, file that uh, was has already been circulated to you, and I shall be using this in the later part of my of, of my lecture. Now I am you can see you can see the look at the bottom left hand corner. I am now in a data view. So in this data view, all this entire database is there. Whatever data has been entered is all there. If I click on variable view, right? If I click on variable view, you will see all the list of variables are all here. They are all here, right? They are all here. And the list of variables are all here. And uh, the type of the variables, et cetera, label, values, et cetera, or, uh, measure type of measure. Measure means whatever we have just discussed. So you can see that each of these variables, a, a particular measure is is is, is described. So that is exactly what we have described, what we have done just now. <clears throat> so for each of these variables, the uh, characteristics of the variables are are described. So that is what uh, is the first uh, view that you have of SPSS. Uh, now yesterday, yeah, yes, okay. So now what we shall do is. I have this particular uh, particular database uh, with me. You can see that my first variable is patient ID number, and uh, the second variable is age. The third one is gender, then height, then weight, etc. And all. <clears throat> now, uh, 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 yes, uh, we shall start with how to enter this database into SPSS very quickly, of course, because uh, some of it could be known to you. Right. And uh, yes, and uh, um, uh, as and as we discuss each and every variable, uh, certain new aspects will come up, and that is that will be the key takeaways of this particular learning session. So you can see here the first. Yeah, you can see here uh, the first session is this. One. The first variable is patient ID number. So if you go to any hospital. Uh, you know there is something called an MRD number that is medical records uh, records department. Many uh, all, many hospitals, almost all hospitals have something like this. So this patient ID number is very is something like a MRD MRD number. Of course that will that number will be a lot longer one, but because we are learning and we are uh, sort of beginners, so you know we will take make keep, keep things simple. So this is a patient ID number now. In this this one, if I have to enter into the debt into this, uh, <clears throat> now I always advise my students that if you have to uh, start creating a SPSS database, two things uh, you know you must follow. It is better to follow this procedure. In step one, <clears throat> in step one, you should click on variable view and enter the characteristics individually. And then go to data view, and then the then enter data. Uh, many you know uh, researchers, uh, especially young researchers who are in a hurry, uh, they go straight away into data view and start entering data. And then you know later on uh, you know realize that some of the variable view also has to be included. And in the process, they also lose some data. So it is not advisable. What is advisable is uh, you know go to step one, and then go to variable view in step one. And enter the characteristics of the variables individually, and then come to step two. That is exactly what I have written here. Now we'll do that. We'll exactly do that. So let me show it first. So yeah. So I, as I said, we'll have to go to variable view. So on my bottom left-hand corner, I'm clicking on variable view. So those of you who have this software, yeah, please click on variable view. And then, uh, as I you know work it out on my machine, you can also replicate that on your machine. And therefore, we learn to, and then you know you can, you can you learn along with me. And you have any questions that I'll take, of course. Yeah. <clears throat> right. So 
And now uh, for each variable, we have to describe the characteristics. So each for each variable, there is a row. So row one, uh, so in row one, we shall uh, enter the characteristics of the first variable. What is the first variable? That is patient ID number. Now, you now, uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, yes. Are you aware that, uh, where is that? Yeah. Yeah, can you see this? Uh, the first variable, the first variable is patient ID number. <clears throat> now, what I'm asking you is, <clears throat> are you aware that there are certain rules to be followed when naming a variable in SPSS? Meaning, you know, if I have to name, if I have to write here, if the name of the variable is, you know, e -A -A -T -I patient I -D dot N. Wait, let me write again. P -A -T -I -E -N -T -I id dot n now if i write like this you can see you'll see that the software will object software will give me an error message it will say this thing can't be done can you see here it tells me that this variable name contains an illegal character okay now so so what has gone wrong yeah can someone suggest what has gone wrong are you aware that there are certain rules to be followed uh, yeah uh, space uh, yeah 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 so yes are you aware, uh, what about others are you aware that there are certain rules to be followed yes are you aware that there are certain rules to be followed when uh, you know naming a variable in spss are you all aware of that if you are aware please write yes so that i know you know that you are all aware otherwise i will you know explain so i've got uh, so uh, okay i've got one no what about others we are 20 you know, 30 almost yeah okay three okay 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 Okay, okay, so by yes, yeah, okay, yes, so uh, yes, okay, so some of them, so yes, so some people are not aware, so maybe I will just for your, uh, uh, you know, for your complete understanding very quickly tell you, and then you can write that down also. So, for when you are naming variables in SPSS, right, these rules have to be followed uh, quickly, these are not rules taken from. Uh, SPSS manual. These are practical rules. But if you follow these rules, I have been using SPSS for 20 years and never had a problem. So you must understand that the name of the variable should consist of alphabets A to Z, 0 to 9, and then you can also use an underscore. Right? Please, those of you who are not aware, you can write it down or you know take a photo or whatever. Uh, you can use your cell phone camera for the photo or whatever. And then the second rule is, you know, the name should not begin with a digit. So that is important. And as someone was suggesting that blank spaces should are not allowed. So don't use blank spaces. Don't use blank spaces and all special characters like, you know, semicolon, dot, etc. To the extent. So these are all advice to be not used. So please don't use those. You get into a problem. Right. <clears throat> so these, if you follow these three rules, then uh, you don't have a, you, won't, you will never have a problem about naming a variable in SPSS. Now you can see here, I've given examples. A2, A2 is a valid variable name because it satisfies uh, you know, this rule because it consists only of alphabets A to Z and the digits 0 to 9. This one, A underscore 2 is also fine. Please understand this is underscore, the dash is not allowed. Uh, then this one is also allowed, this underscore A1 because it satisfies this, you see? Here, the underscore is allowed, then A, this is an alphabet, this is a number. What this last one, which I have colored red, that is not allowed because it starts with a digit. So therefore, that is what is important. And uh, so if you have written it down, yeah, should I? Yeah. Those of you who are writing quickly, yeah, have, if you have written it down, then shall I, then I shall move. Should I hold it on the screen or you have written it down? If you have written it down, quickly say yes, so I can move. Or if you have taken photograph, that also is fine. Yeah. Okay, so I'll move now. Right. So quickly, so therefore, yeah, so I have to write patient. Now I can't give blank spaces. So I say use underscore and then say N. Right. So this one, the software will accept. It will not object. Okay. Right. Then uh, <clears throat> each variable, the type has to be declared for each variable. You have to declare a type. Now, what are the options? The options are it is very easy. The software, as I said, is very easy to use. Uh, click on this cell. Now, moment you click on the cell, there is a blue button which will appear by its side. Now, 
click on that blue button. Okay, click on that blue button. Now there are your options. Your options are given, and you can choose whatever applies in your case. So now you have to recall what sort of data this particular variable would capture. So now you look at this. My variable is patient ID number, and what the what is the data that it, this is capturing? It is something like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And because you know this is only for uh, for learning, so normally you you don't do uh, a serious research with such a small database unless of course there are special circumstances. Otherwise, you know this is too small. But just because we are learning and that I wanted to put everything in one screen, so I have only a sample of size 15. So I have 15 respondents, and this patient ID numbers these run from one, two, three, four up to 15. So you can see that these numbers are of the type numeric. So there is an option here, numeric. Uh, so we'll have to choose numeric for this particular uh, particular uh, variable and uh, fix up what is this decimal places and then this width. Now you can see, again, you have to look at the type of data that this particular variable is capturing. Again, you look at the data. Uh, you can see here, these are all integers, one, two, three, four, et cetera. There are no decimal places. So we are not, you know, no, not using any decimal place. So decimal places we will specify as zero, no decimal places. Okay. And what about the width? Right now, the width is the space that is minimally required. I should I shall repeat the word minimal. The minimum you know space that is required in order to be able to enter all the data. That is what is important. The minimum space that is required in order to be able to enter all the data. Now, if you see, look here, my the minimum number is one. Two, three, four, it goes on, and the maximum is 15. So I need, uh, you know, a, a minimum of two digits in order to be able to enter all the data. So my width here will therefore be two. There is, of course, no harm if you increase the width. You can write five, six, seven, eight, no issues. Only thing is, you if you increase the width, suppose you write in place of two, you write six. Suppose what happens now? Your software will work. That is the first important thing for you. But if you if it is a long but the software will use up a lot of memory space because the software will be preserving a space of six a width of six for entering the data when actually you will be using only up to two because my highest number is only 50. so that way you use some memory space that is the only important thing for you to understand otherwise whenever you are in doubt i that's what i advise my students whenever you are in doubt you can increase this width, no harm, no problem, no, uh, no, nothing will go wrong. Okay, so just to recap, whatever I said, this particular variable patient ID number, here I the type of the variable is numeric, the decimal place is zero, and we have specified the width as two. Right. And then I shall have to press OK. Those of you who have the software with you, I hope you are with me, uh, and you are also doing uh, replicating whatever I have I am doing on the screen. Yeah, so numeric with decimal that is done. Now label, what is the purpose of a label? Now label, firstly, please understand. Yes. Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Uh, in order to be, yeah, in order to be with you, and I'm sir, exactly with you, uh, the width we, uh, you have mentioned here too. Uh, what, in previous data set we have shown, can you, sir, show me the width in the previous data set in the word file you have shown to me? Word files. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That. Where is the weight? Yeah, in this in this data set. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. In this, yeah. yeah. So this is the data. This is the data that we shall enter for this particular variable. So here we need a maximum. We need a minimum width of two. The maximum number is fifteen. We need 15, a width two of digit two. number. Okay. Got it, sir. Got it. Got it, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you for clarification. <clears throat> okay. Now this name is, you know, name is mandatory. You have to declare to the software the name, similarly the type, and then the width and decimals. Now because you know you are all, many of you are beginners. I think some of them, some of you have some ex exposure to SPSS. Uh, for beginners, I always advise that you fix up the width and decimals through this blue button. Okay, as I did. So I press that blue button. You have width, decimal, etc. You fix it up here and then press OK. So automatically, these things will also get fixed up. Once you gain a little bit of experience, you can also you know, increase the number here. This option is also available. But there are some internal checks. So initially, for beginners, I always advise don't try this. 
because then you are, then you will you could get stuck up. I'm not saying you will get, but you could get stuck up. Easier way is to click on this type and then this blue button and then fix it up. That is the whole idea. Okay, so as I said, this name, type, and width, and decimals, these four are mandatory. You have to declare for every variable. It has to be done. This label is optional. So what is the purpose of a label? The purpose, basically, you know, when you are de defining a name, <coughs> defining a name, then what happens is those rules have to be followed. Because those rules have to be followed, so sometimes, not always, but in many occasions, the names, people use codes. Okay, people use codes. So then what happens is, if you don't de declare a label, now what is what happens with a label? With a label, when I actually work on a particular variable, then this label, if no, if no label is declared, then the output in the software will be using the name of the variable. I'll repeat that again. Suppose you don't declare a variable, and you do something using this particular variable. You have an output with this variable. Then what will happen is the software will use the name. Now, many a, sometimes, not many a time, sometimes the names are in quotes. So it is not always understandable. So in the output, it, they will use only the name. And then because the name is, is in many occasions in quotes, so whoever will, under, will read the output may not understand. <clears throat> so therefore, there is this. Uh, and the software gives us this uh, uh, additional facility of a label. The label, as I said, is optional. But the, uh, if you are using a label, <coughs> please understand that the label does not have any rules, unlike the name. So you can literally like write the way you want the thing to appear in the output. Okay. So therefore, here I am at liberty to write e a t i e n t i d number. So I can write, you know the way I want it. So now that I have written a label, so if I do anything with this particular variable, this patient ID number is what will appear in the output. If this was blank, then this was this would have happened. Now, now this will appear very abstract to you. So let me show you exactly what I mean. Right. <laughs> now you look at this. <clears throat> look at this. This is the database that has been uh, already circulated to you. right? Now, just to give you a little background about this database, this is a very well-known database. It is IHDS DS. Uh, is it familiar to any of the participants? IHDS. Okay. What is IHDS? IHDS is India Human Development Survey. Now, as far as I remember, I think there has been so, so far there has been four rounds of this India Human Development Survey. It's a very large database, freely available, freely downloadable. That is only a simple. Uh, sim a simple registration that is required uh, for this, and you get access to this database. This database is in available in SPSS format as well as in other formats. Important thing is, it is, it is a very exhaustive database. It will have some 900 plus variables or fields. Okay, 900 plus. So you can understand the you know the the variety of data this that, that this particular database is capturing. And the number of respondents or number of cases, if you understand, uh, in SPSS, there is a term called case. Again, I'll explain as I come along. Uh, a case is, the, is, a, is each record of data. So I'm now in data view. So here, this is the case. You know, this is the first case. This is the second case. That way, you know, it goes. So in SPSS, in this IHDS, it has more than one lakh cases. Okay, it's a, it's a huge database, and you know many people are using it for lots of their research. Government uses it, policymakers use it, etc. Now, because this is a very heavy database, what I've only done is I have taken a five percent sample of this uh, database, and I have mailed it to all of you, so that uh, you know as I as I ex as I explain, uh, we will get a sense of you know how to use how to work with published secondary data sources. Okay. Now to come back to the my story. My story. What I was trying to emphasize was how this uh, label is important. I will. I will because I will. Yeah. I will uh, uh, focus attention on this particular variable number fifteen. Can you see here? The name of the variable is COPC. Now see COPC. If you just look at COPC, you don't understand what is it. Neither do I understand because I have not designed designed this database. I am only a user. I use it for my work for my research. But they have what they have done is in this label they have declared something H H nineteen then twelve then what is that? That is monthly consumption per capita. 
Now, if I do any analysis using on this particular variable, like let me try something. Suppose I try to find out the mean. So analyze descriptive statistics and then go to descriptives, right? And where is that variable? Yes, here we are, HH 1912. Huh? Yes, and I'll of course come back to all this uh, later part. So you don't, please don't bother even if you are not following this entire, you, even if you don't remember the steps, but I'll give, give you the steps. So now look at this. Where is the output? Ah. Yes, can you see here this, this particular screen? Now can, yes, yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, can you see here in the output what is it using? It is not. It is not using the variable name. The variable name, do you, if you remember, was C or PC, right? It is not using the variable name. Instead, it is using the label because the label has been declared. Had there been no label for this particular variable, then the software would have written C or PC here. Now, anything if C or PC is written here, then of course for anyone to read and understand what this particular table is trying to give out is difficult. But the moment you know this uh, uh, label is there, monthly consumption per capita, we all understand. So monthly capita per uh, monthly consumption per capita is 939.72. Now we all know. So that is the added benefit of label. <clears throat> so I'll come back to what I was trying to say. Right. So this label is, you know, please do write it down, those of you who are new to the software, that this is not mandatory. But if, if it is used, then the software will use the label in its output. That is what is important. OK, <clears throat> the values I'll declare, and I'll not discuss now. I'll come to that later on. Then this measure, this one has to be declared. Again, the moment you click on the software, uh, on, this, on this cell, there will be a menu here, drop down menu, scale, ordinal, and nominal. Now you will have to remember all that I have discussed uh, towards the beginning of my lecture. That was about uh, this thing called uh, that uh, uh, PowerPoint slide that I had just shown. So scale, ordinal, and nominal. Now you will have to classify which particular variable this should be declared. So is it a, which particular type? Is it a scale measure or an ordinal measure or the nominal measure? Now how do you go about answering this question? Various ways. Various people have various ways. Uh, I have a simple way. I ask myself: Is this var is the response of this variable categorical? I ask myself, okay, it's not necessary that you should follow my method. You can have your own method, but this is one of the methods. So I ask myself, is this particular variable categorical? Is it capturing categorical data? That is one, the question I ask. Now, if you look at my data, look at my variable, this is patient ID number, right? Then these are simple numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, up to 15, simple numbers. This is, this is not capturing any categorical data, unlike let's say gender. Gender is male, female. That would be categorical. But this is not categorical, this patient ID number. Therefore, if it is not categorical, it can neither be nominal nor ordinal because nominal and ordinal deals with categorical data. So therefore, the you know by exclusion, the, without making things too complicated and getting into you know finer details of the definition of what exactly is a, a quantitative variable and the scale variable. So by using this concept of exclusion, so I've excluded out nominal and ordinal and what remains is scale so therefore this is the scale variable right so this way you know the basic characteristics of my first variable is declared right at this point do you have any questions no sir it's clear ah, okay fine now i'll come to the next one okay the next variable <clears throat> what is the next one the Excuse next me, one is... am i audible yes 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 sir i could not understand why it is not the nominal it is not nominal. Yeah. Why is it not nominal? That's okay. It. Okay. Yeah. 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 Can you suggest why, you know, uh, what is in your mind that is troubling you regarding why it should be nominal? Can you explain what is it in your mind that is troubling you that it should be nominal? Because okay. nominal, has, yeah. Yeah. Tell yeah, me, because, yes. Uh, sir, because yeah. scale is a uh, quantitative uh, data and uh, it is measurable generally. And so, uh, yeah. Uh, this is uh, this, in my opinion, is not measurable in that sense. So why yeah. isn't it scale? Why why okay. isn't it nominal but scale? Yeah, yeah. So that is what is you know that you know you have fine definition about uh, what is measurable and uh, you know uh, uh, you know the word quantitative 
in terms yes. of measurable. Yeah, that is exactly what is troubling you. I've understood. Right. Yes. Now, I said I, yes, yes. For beginners, you know, and when you are, because you have uh, uh, people from all domains, <clears throat> we will not get into a pedantic, uh, you know, discussion about uh, the finer elements of how, you know, a variable, what is the definition of a precise definition of a scale and uh, precise definition of a quantitative variable or a measurable variable. Yes. Basically, <clears throat> yes, we have to have some practical rules. The important thing is that one of the three has to be chosen. Okay. Scale, ordinal, or nominal. Now, if you look at this, uh, if you look at the type of data that this particular important thing is the practicability. Okay, so that everyone can follow and everyone can use this database. If yes. you look at the type of data, this is a patient ID one, two, three, four, up to fifteen. Okay, because you have it in your mind. That's why that is why I am saying you are not in any case. You know, calculating the mean or median doesn't make any sense because these are yes. just numbers. One, yeah. Right. Yes. Okay. Uh, which is which is what we usually do when we have a scale variable. That is yes. not the case. So yes. So as I said, not people. Very various people have various ways. Depend. Okay. My way, the way you know, I find it very useful, and people from all domains can actually usually follow that. That way is you know looking using the principle of uh, you know exclusion. So there, it works very well in almost all cases. So if I have scale, or nominal, and Nominal and minimal are actually categorical data. The response to the variables has to be in categories. Hmm. Those categories, because you are asking, that is why this is a longish answer. There's those categories can be in terms of numbers also. You can classify a male as one and female as two. That can also be done. You yes. can also classify a male as M and a female as F. That can also be done. Hmm. But irrespective of that, uh, irrespective of that, if the variable here is not one of those categories, okay, hmm. one to two, it goes on. If you have 10,000 patients, this number will go from 1 to up to 10,000. So okay. this response is not in any case a, a scale variable. It not, is not in any case a categorical variable. If it is not categorical, it can neither be nominal nor ordinal. So therefore, the only thing that you know that remains, that remains is the scale. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Okay. Thank that's, you. That's the Thank way. You, huh? Nothing. Nothing beyond that. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. Next. Next. Where are we? Yes. The next one is age. Now age. Now, because if you have followed whatever I have said so far, now you can I can go a little faster, I guess. Now this is age in completed. What well, you know, you ask a patient what is their age, so that's it. So the nearest age is what patients usually respond. So I can write a name as age here. That is no problem because it satisfies those three rules of mine that I had given. That's one. Then uh, the about type. As I said, click on this uh, button called type. Uh, uh, and then you have this blue button, and on this blue button, you click again. Now someone can you can add, you can you know uh, suggest what I should choose, depending upon the type of the variable. This is remember is age. So people are you know giving out their age at the point at the time of data collection, right? So now can someone suggest what this should be? I have, I have this all these choices quickly, and I would like to yeah uh, three in width is what someone has chosen. That is nice. Okay, and what about the type? Quickly, I would prefer to have from someone who is learning it from the first time. Prefer to have an answer. Yeah, that is yeah. It is numeric. Can numeric? Huh. It is numeric. Yeah. So that is numeric. And uh, again, the question is about uh, decimal places. Should we have or should we not have? I mean, should, what should be the decimal places? What should I write? Should it be two, five, zero, so, or? Zero. Uh, it is usually zero, zero because, uh, because we are the way the data has been is being collected or has been collected. We are not asking them, you know, what is the what is the exact uh, age, how many days, how many months, how many years, etc. It's just the nearest age. So it is they are all integers. Yes. Yeah. So therefore, this is zero, and then you have width here. Again, the question is width. Now, uh, theoretically, yes, if you, because this is this is the age. Uh, in this particular database, there is no one who is 100 or 100 plus. But yes, theoretically, someone can be 102. So therefore, as someone is suggesting that I should write the width as 3, that is fine. I can write it as 3. Okay, so that is what I have written. I hope that is clear. If you have doubts, you can, of course, you know, write on the, uh, on the chat box. And then press OK. Right? So age, <coughs> numeric 3, 0. And here, uh, can someone tell me whether I should use a label or should not use a label? If you have followed whatever I've said here, 
for the first variable, then you should be able you should be able to tell me uh, whether I should or should not is the label. Huh? Any ideas? Yes. Any responses? Quickly, because we don't have much time. But I have to go. I have to cover a lot. Yeah. Ah, yes. So it is not needed. Yes, someone has just said it is not needed. I fully agree. Because if I don't use a label, as I said, we the software will use the variable name. And the variable name itself is age. It explains. It's not in quotes. Right? So therefore, this age is good enough. So I don't need a label. I will not use a label. And these things, of course, I, I will come to later on. And what about measure? Now, yes, someone can tell me what I should choose. Again, you must re remember whatever I had discussed for the variable called patient ID number and the type of data that is being collected. <clears throat> yeah, can someone suggest what I should use, which one I should yeah, Yeah, so that is scale. So obviously, again, the same sort of a logic here. If I use, if I if I have to use that sort of a logic through exclusions, so the, the nearest age uh, is being recorded. So it is not the data is not categorical, and therefore, you know, we have this option here in scale, and it also makes sense because when we analyze this age, we will have all those uh, you know analysis to be done. You know, what is the average age of patients who have reported cancer? So for that, you will need a variable which is quantitative. So therefore, this variable is that way is age. Okay, then uh, yeah, uh, those of you who are, as I said, with uh, uh, you know beginners and you are doing it on your machines, I hope you are with me and then you are following. If you are want me to s slow down a bit, I shall. But you should tell me. Right. Okay. Fine. Now, <clears throat> next the next variable you can see here is gender. Huh? The next one is here. This is gender, right? Gender. So again, M and F has been written. <coughs> so I can, the next variable is gender. Variable name is gender. And yes, and what about the type of variable? Now you will have to be a little careful because you will have to plan. You'll have to plan appropriately. What is the planning to be done here? The planning is this way. You see, I have written for the part, you know, M and F. As you, if those of you who have some experience with data collection, you will have a questionnaire, right? And then you will have boxes to tick. Tick. So if someone is a male, you will tick the M box or male box, and someone is a female, you will tick the female box. That is what is usually there in the questionnaire. Now, for the purpose of you know entering data, now you will have to plan. Do you write M A L E or do you write F E M A L? If you write MALE and FAMALE, firstly, you, know, you waste a lot of time. That is one. And secondly, you also, uh, the other problem is you also commit mistakes. Well, a mistake in the sense, uh, spelling mistakes. So those are there. And then uh, this software, is in, it is important that all of you understand this. This software is case sensitive. Now, you understand what is case sensitive in these days of uh, passwords every now and then. So therefore, you know, so any F-E-M-A-L-E with a capital F and F-E-M-A-L-E with a small f will make two different categories. So you end up with a lot of issues. So so I do, so to save everything, to save yourself time as well as to save yourself issues, uh, I mean, to not to have issues, ensure that you don't have issues, it is better to have some sort of a code. Now, you can have two types of code. One is a numeric code. You can have one for male and two for me female. Or maybe one for male and zero for female, or any other, any other scheme. Ten for male and twenty for female. Everything is possible. That is one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is use these codes M and F, as I have written, because that is easier to relate. That's all. Because otherwise, during data entry, you will have to remember that what was one. If I was it was one for male or was one for female. And many a times, what happens is data entry is done by multiple persons, not one. So all of them will have to remember that one means female. If I use numeric, if I decide to use one a numeric code, one for male and one for female, then yeah, all of them, all the data entry operators will have to remember, and then you know you make mistakes then. So that way, you know this M and F is easier to remember from that point of view. But you can have your own choice. There is no hard and fast rule, and both of them will give you a similar, I mean, same analysis, no problem. So you can either have a have a M and F code. M for male, F for female, or you can have a numeric code, no issues. Okay, so suppose I have an M and F code. So I decide that I will use M for male and F for female. Again, not M meaning capital M, 
because the software will distinguish between capital M and small m as input. So you have string. Uh, so I have declared this this time not as numeric but as a string. Now the moment uh, you declare a variable as a string, uh, you know that the whole concept of width and decimal will vanish because it doesn't make sense. Instead, you will have characters. Now again, it's plain common sense. You know, how much space do I require to enter the data? That is the whole purpose. So how much space? So uh, you are either entering m or either entering female, uh, rather f. So you need a space of one is good enough. So you can write one. You can, as I said, you can of course write five or six or eight or ten. No issues. Only thing is that the memory space. That's all. Beyond that, nothing else. So what I have done is just to recall. I have I just cancel this and then say that go over the entire thing again. Variable name is gender. This is numeric. And then I clicked on this blue button. I selected string because that is the uh, you know the data entry scheme that I have decided. And then there is this character. This character is one. This character is one. So and then this is okay. Okay. Right. <clears throat> so that is that is it. That is all about. And now I am not again using a label. I will not waste uh, because again it is not necessary because the name itself is good enough. It explains. Now this time I will have to use this. I will have to declare values. So basically, in very common sense, you know, way of understanding is values means you know declaring the codes. That is what you know, very common, a very common sense way of understanding. You can have a big debate about what is exactly a value and how do you define etc. and all that. Pointless. <coughs> basically, the idea is: see, if I write m, you don't want in the output also to contain m. The output when the software uses software analysis and gives you an output output it should not write m it should write male if you are if there is something on females i should should not use f it should use write female but we are not writing male and female during data entry during data entry i shall only use m and i shall only use f right so therefore somewhere i will have to declare to the software that f means female and uh, m means male right so that's it. So, so that is what is done here. So, this value means, in a very crude way, value means that code. Okay, so my code is m, and this label means the explanation to that uh, explanation to that code. So, this is male. Okay, so the code is male, and the explanation to that the code m means m a l e male, and then I'll have to click add. So, those of you who are uh, using the software, learning the software along with me, click on this. Okay. This is M, hmm? <clears throat> and then uh, yeah, and because I have not finished, so and then there is this F, which is uh, for female. Again, remember we are using capital F, and then yes, so capital M is for male, and then I click on add, and then capital F. Is for female, F E M A L E. After I've written it down, then I must click on add. Only then does it get registered. Otherwise, it is not registered. So I click on add. Okay. So F is female, M is male. Right. And then I press OK. Okay. And then I should press OK. Now, moment I press OK, this is all there. Okay. Right. So I've explained. Uh, why values is important. Now, someone will have to tell me, I did not declare any values for the first two variables. Did I do, did I, I mean, should I have done it or did I commit a mistake or I did not, or this is fine? So it is fine. Huh. Yes, and I can I have some other response? Yes, you can type on the chat box. First two variables, I did not declare any values. Here on the third variable, I have declared. Now for the first two variables, did I you know, commit a mistake? That is my question. You can write on the chat. Board. Okay, sir, no issue. Okay, fine then. Yes, what about others? I, we are close to 30, 25 to 30, I guess. So I've got just two responses one on the audio and the other on the chat box. No, it's no answer. Okay, then values needed for categorical data. Okay, then, then my, my question was not whether values were values are needed for categorical data. My question was. Whether I committed a mistake by not declaring values for the first two variables. That was my question. So most of you is uh, no matter. Yes, no. Most of you have understood that for these first two variables, 
that is yeah 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 for the first two variables values are not required that is because for the first two variables we are not we shall not be entering data in terms of codes for the first two variables whatever is the exact whatever is the exact age i shall enter age there is no code there whereas in the third one because we are entering data in terms of codes f for female and for male so the values have to be declared so that is the purpose and we have understood right now the question is the moment i have declared that a string so therefore the scale option will not be displayed now i have to make a choice between nominal and ordinal on gender i have already told you that you know there is nothing to <coughs> give a order uh, to naturally order between males and females so therefore this is a nominal uh, nominal variable right okay so we have we have you know we have we are just starting with constructing the database so we have finished the first three right <clears throat> i'll come to the next i'll come to the shall i come because we don't have much time let me go to the fourth one which is weight can you see ha huh. i shall come to this one because we don't have much time right huh? this i'll go to this so you can see here so there are 52 kilograms 63.5 45.3 etc etc okay so can you see that this is slightly this data is slightly different from this age data that is the first thing that should strike you this is slightly different yeah can someone tell me what is different decimal value is there huh? ah. so in case of age you know all that uh, that was integer right there were no decimal places but here i have to account for the decimal places so i have to be a little more careful so what is the additional thing that we shall learn here so this is about height was it height or was it weight i think it was weight right weight weight okay so wait wait right okay now again uh, the name of the variable i've kept as weight then this is type uh numeric type yes and what should be the type because we shall enter the exact uh, weight so the type of data will be numeric that is very clear loud and clear now the question is decimal places in the first two variables age and patient id number i had declared decimal places as zero in this case, what should it be? I'll show you the data again, just in case you want to refresh yourself. Yes, the so weight in kilograms. So what should be the number of decimal places? Is it so zero? Two is okay. Ha, two is okay. Okay. Why well, is three also okay? Now that is a different, difficult question to answer, right? No, no, sir. Three is always okay. Three is always okay. Five? Yes, sir. But uh, we uh, ah, so we take three, four, five anymore, but uh, not less than two. Okay. Okay. Achha. Now let me. Achha. Let I'll come to all that. Right. So in any case, we need two decimal places in order to be able to, you know, feed in all the data. So decimal places is two. Now what about the width? Now again, I shall you know show you the data. Now you can tell me. I mean, we have discussed width earlier. Not that we have discussed width in the context of this variable called weight, but we discuss this in the context of age. Right? Now, yes, can someone guess what should be the width here? Width at least uh, uh, three. Uh, I have one suggestion that should be three. Yes. Any other suggestions? Yes. Any other suggestions? Four. Uh, four. Yes. I've got three. I've got four. Uh, I got another three and two. Yes. Any other? Anything else? Three. Yeah. I got three. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what about others? Yeah. Two or three. Okay. Yes. Now see, this is the, there is a, there is a little bit of an issue here. Unfortunately, almost all of you have got it wrong, right? And the reason is this way. If you look at this data, when you calculate weight, you know this decimal places we have to make. Uh, you know we have to account for this decimal place also. Uh, maybe I can, I should increase the size. Uh, can you see now this mm. highlighted? Yes. yes. This decimal place also occupies, you know, as, pl as a place. So uh, we have to make, you have to take account for this. You have to account for this. So if I, and this width, remember, please understand, width means the entire thing, inclusive of the decimal places. That is where almost all of you got it wrong. I think you were calculating with, you know, forgetting the, uh, not accounting for the decimal part. So, then it, uh, so yeah, it, it should be five. 
Yes, it will be five now. Yes. So therefore, if you declare the decimal place as two, right? And then remember this decimal point has to be included in our calculation and then two more because there is no one more than 100 here weighing more than 100. If you have someone who is more than 100, then of course, this, you'll have to make it six. So otherwise, now the width is one, two, uh, these two for the decimal place, uh, decimal uh, digits, then the decimal point three, and then you have two more. So that is five. Okay, the width here is five. So I have decimal place of two and the width here is five. Now there are a few, uh, yeah, okay. a few other things I have to explain. Where is that? Yeah. So the width is five. Right? The width is five. I have to press OK now. Huh? Now, a few more issues that a uh, few more, yeah. Someone was suggesting that the number of decimal places can be three, right? Where well, point well taken, yeah, it can very well be three. But if you, if you, if you, if the number of decimal places is three, then my question will be, what should be the width? Can someone tell me? If I fix the number of decimal places of three, then what will happen is this will not come as it will not appear as sixty-three point five. It will appear as sixty-three point five zero zero. Then we do yes. six. Yes, in that case, yes, 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 absolutely. So now you have all got it right. So now you know how to calculate. If I if the number if the if I increase the width if the number of decimal places to three, then the width would be six. And in case you have someone weighing more than hundred kilos, then the width would be seven. Right? I hope you have all got it right. I know you have all understood. Okay. So where am I? Where am I? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, yes, now quickly, should I write label here or not? No, sir. Uh, not no. required. No, not sir, required. no need. No, you are all sure not, not required. Uh, yes, uh, I have a little bit of uh, experience because that is my profession, uh, statistics, so therefore data analysis. Now, you know, when I write, when I, you know, use, uh, when I see this variable called weight, now immediately, you know, I always, people have a tendency of asking what is the unit of measurement you understand so the unit of measurement has it is better to identify to write it down so that you know people have a clear picture when they are reading when they are reading your research report so it is better to write weight in kilograms uh, it might also be in pounds who knows we don't know so therefore unless you specify the width uh, specify the unit of measurement in all cases not only in weight it can be in anything <laughs> So therefore, it is better. So if I write here weight in kilograms, you know, here, then uh, within brackets, then will the software allow me? Can someone, you know, uh, guess? If I write within brackets here in kilograms, just the way I have written in my, in this, you know, weight in kilograms, uh, will the software allow me? Is what is is what I am asking. We'll have to remember whatever I have been discussing. My question, have you followed my question? What I'm asking is here, in place of writing weight, if I plan, if I write weight within bracket in kilograms, now will the software allow me? One way is like, I should, I can write and do the trial and error. If the software doesn't give me an error message, it is accepted. Otherwise, you know, uh, it is not accepted. But, you know, you should be able to tell me, ah, special characters are not allowed. Absolutely. Yes, he is right. So you remember my, you know, <coughs> Rule number three in whatever I had written, all those special characters, blank spaces should not be used. And brackets in any case are not allowed. So I cannot write weight here. So I'll have to write, I'll, I'll label either W E R G H T in kilos. Okay. Weight in kil, weight in kilograms. Now this enter, now this is what will be used by the software in the output. So whoever uses this uses the results, he or she will know that the unit of measurement is in kilograms. Fine. Uh, uh, just uh, five seconds. Do I need to uh, declare values here on the chat box? Give me the response. Five seconds. No, I've got one response. Yes. What about others? What about others? Do I need to declare values here? I have a second, third, okay, three, only 10%. No. Uh, no, yeah, that's very clear because we are not entering data in quotes. We are entering the actual weight in kilograms. Fine. Yes. And then, yes, this option here, <coughs> yeah, I want to, yeah. 
and then this measure scale ordinal and nominal yeah quickly <clears throat> scale ordinal and nominal yeah which one should apply can someone suggest based upon whatever we have discussed so far you can use your chat box should i should it be scale should it be nominal or should it be ordinal huh? it is a scale measure i've got two responses both of them will say scale so yes so we all agree on scale that is fine <clears throat> Right. Now I'll ask you, you know, as we because now we have had the benefit of, of this all this discussion yesterday session and then sometime today. Quickly, suppose here, right here, here, right. Uh, this was weight in kilograms. But instead of weight in kilograms, we write, you know, weight not in terms of kilograms, but you know that uh, usual uh, categorization: underweight, normal weight, overweight, obese. Underweight, normal weight, and obese. So we are not supposed to be right. We know here underweight, whether someone is an underweight or normal weight or obese. If I do that, then uh, then in my in my in this the scale measure, what will what should you choose? I hope you are ordinal. Yeah, very good. Nice. Yes. Okay. So yes, I so nice. So that is nice. So because uh, because the response to that variable would then be categorical. And in that categorical also, again, you have, you know, a natural ordering between the categories. So therefore, in that case, the option would be ordinary. Excellent. Yes. All right. Now, because again, we have, we don't have a, a luxury of uh, time. So, <coughs> yes. So we'll not do all that. Uh, yes. That's right. Uh, Yes, uh, we'll try this status and then you know you'll move to something else quickly. Yeah, now we'll uh, we will uh, you know uh, create uh, try this one. So, status. So, here we are status. So, I shall write status. Status, right? Now, again, now you tell me what should be the choice here. Someone should, you know, uh, someone should yeah yeah can you tell me yes what should i how should i plan the data entry your planning is very important because in in very very rare cases you will have just 15 cases as the example of mine is you won't have 15 cases you will have thousand maybe you know few thousands maybe even more so your time spent for data entry and correct data entry is very important so you have to plan properly right so this status so how do you plan firstly make a plan how are you going to enter data? Are you going to write censored, expired, censored, expired, or something like that? And remember, two of those are blanks. Blank meaning, you know, that data we don't have. Uh, we don't have for a various reasons. It could be that data was collected and was lost, or it could be that the data collector forgot to, you know, hit the required box for those two respondents in the questionnaire. Many things can happen. Doesn't matter. So yes, quickly. So what would be the plan? So will you make a plan similar to gender? In which case, what should be my coding strategy? I'm not getting, I'm looking for, I'm waiting for a response. So like, I, I'll give you hints. Like for gender, we decided that we shall use capital M for males and capital M for females. That is what we decided for gender. Now for this status, what should we use? You look at my data. We can apply well. Uh, ah, in case please. of use uh, censored uh, equal to one and expired equal to zero. Yeah, on the on the chat box, please. Otherwise, you know, we have too much of audio disturbance. Yeah. So like gender, yes. Okay, yes. So like gender, as someone said, it has to be done. So we'll do that. So you can see we can use again if I use the same method. Uh, you, uh, uh, yeah, you, it is C for censored and E for expired. That can be done. Uh, uh, you understand what is censored? Censored means you know these are cancer patients. So uh, at the point of uh, data collection, the patient has not yet expired, but he is still alive. Okay, and so what will be the his life, uh, the length of his life, we do not know. Okay, 
so you know, it's something like that. So it, you know, it, it, part of the information is there. So that is why you know the censored censored word appears. Otherwise, you will have to write. You know, he is still alive, not expired alive, expired alive, something like that. Okay. So we can write C for censored, E for expired. That can be done. So in which case, uh, or the other option was someone was suggesting that we must use numeric code. So I can use uh, zero for expired and one for censored. That can also be done. So if I use zero for expired and one for censored, then remember I will have to use numeric because I'm using numeric codes. So if I use that, okay, numeric codes, and then the number of decimal places would be zero. Yes, and then the number of week is one because we are using the zero one, you know, zero one scheme. So zero is for expired, one is for censored. That's it. So that is how it is zero one, and then I have okay. Right. <clears throat> now, uh, yes, now uh, should I have should I declare values or not? On the chat box, please, quickly. I want a few response. Five seconds. Should I declare values or should I not declare values? Quickly. On the chat box, your response. I am waiting. Yes. So uh, there I've got one response. It says, I must use, I've got two yes. Yes, if the codes have been used. We are using codes, that is what, yes. So we, have, so we all agree that codes are, so that the codes have to be declared. Yes, so we have all understood. So our values here, so zero. So value zero is for expired. So E X P I R E G expired. Expired. And one is for censored. So C E N S O R. And then I'll have to press OK. Right. Yes. Right. Huh? So I have. I hope you have all understood why we need values. I think it's quite clear now that you are also responding. So I take it that you have understood. So at this point of time, do you have any questions? Kim, no, sir. Uh, it's very clear. Uh, it is very clear. Yes. No other questions. No other questions. Yes. No. Acha. Okay. But uh, yes. Yeah. One, in, yeah, no question, no question. So, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> uh, do you notice that there is something very odd in whatever is being is in my screen now? Do you notice that there is something odd in whatever is in my screen now? Everything is correct. Can you notice that there is a spelling mistake? One small one, the other one is capital, that is one minor one, but there is another major one. Yeah, in censored. censored. Yes, you must be very careful because see, if I, if I, if I, this correcting the, uh, this is easy, this is not difficult. That is not difficult. But the important thing is if I write, if I, if it remains like this, and all what will happen then is all your output will contain the spelling mistake. Wherever you have used any this particular variable for your analysis. It will contain the spelling mistake, and then it becomes a hell of a problem to you know correct everything later on when it comes out in the form of a report. So you have to be careful. I purposely did this that why that this particular mistake. Now just because I wanted to show you something. Now question is these mistakes when you type on the keyboard because we are all human beings, uh, it will always happen. Some mistakes someone will come will always commit. So some people will be more careful, so they will have fewer mistakes. Others will be a, a little. Uh, <coughs> Relax, and then you'll have more mistakes. So, question is, if you have mistakes, how do you correct? That has to be understood. So, it is this way. See, my censored here is the is what is wrong. So, this needs correction. So, I am, you know, so you click on that particular. I'm you click on that particular category. So, that is my left. I it has immediately gets highlighted, and it is also displayed here. Now, there are two options. One is either you click on remove. Uh, you click on remove. Click on remove and the entire thing is entire thing vanishes and you do it afresh. So that is one way of doing it. The other simple way is you do the correction, carry out the correction. So that is C S O R E D sensor. Okay. And then click on this thing called this button called change. So moment to click on this button called change, the corrections are carried out. So now you are you know safe. Uh, you are safe. Okay, so I wanted to show you this facility, so that is why I made that mistake perfectly. So expired, censored, and then this is okay. 
right <clears throat> i'm running out of time quickly and then there is this uh, scale measure so what should this be remember because we have declared this variable as new array so i have all the three options available so which one should i choose on the chat box quickly someone is saying nominal yes 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 quickly yes only one out of 30 has responded scale scale ordinal ordinal yeah okay then i have got three responses three are three different okay then nominal Acha. okay then i have got just four responses nominal okay Acha. okay nominal so i've got a number of nominal Acha. see look here this way uh firstly it cannot be scaled because the date because the data being captured by the variable is categorical it cannot be scaled so that is ruled out the choice is between ordinal and nominal now uh, we have only two types of information what is uh, one is nominal uh, and uh, sorry one is expired so we know what is the status of the patient and the other one you know, is uh, censored so you know that is part of the information is also only available not full information what happened okay so therefore you know because so it is difficult to make a you know ordering so you know this i to me if you ask me this nominal makes more sense so i will go by nominal Achha. now there is something again you know because we are running out of time yeah can you see here that's in this variable called status in this variable called status there are two uh data on two respondents are not available this will happen in all data collection exercises you will never have 100% complete data for all the variables, all the fields. It will never happen. So you will always have some sort of, some sort of missing data. Okay. <clears throat> now in in uh, Excel, what do you do with missing data? Any ideas? If you have used, have you anal, have you worked with Excel? I'm sure all of you have worked with Excel. So if you have some missing data, what do you do in Excel? On the chat box, quickly. Yes. Or if you want to, uh, you know, speak up, yes, open, you know, unmute yourself and also speak up. Have you done some analysis in Excel? Deletion of the parameter. You enter if you delete that particular. Are you suggesting deletion of the stat of the entire variable called status? If you enter, if you delete the entire variable called status, all this data that you have for the other respondents that would also get deleted. Ah, so there are one response is blank. Other response is zero. Okay, then remove the record or case. You remove, but if you remove this particular case, your data for of on this case on the other variables will also get removed. You get my point? If I remove this one, these two cases, so your data for your this entire data, this entire thing, this entire thing that will also get erased. So that is not a very good option. Okay, so someone was suggesting that I should put zero because I have put uh, what was that? What is that? replace with mean ignore case during analysis okay uh, <laughs> i meant to remove that particular case parameter okay Achha. now uh, replace with mean is better not done because you know that way you lose out on variability it's better not done but yes that is something that many people are have the habit of doing but the reason why i took up this question is it is different it's entirely different the reason is this way <clears throat> the one option is to leave that you know leave that cell blank wherever no data is available so that option is blank now that is easy because that is um, normally the sort of thing that people do even in excel and in other databases but that is not 100 percent you know uh, advisable uh, i will need some five ten minutes time if i have to explain that why it has to be done so i'll skip that okay why you know it is it is advisable it is not at why it is advisable not to leave any 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 cell as blank but someone see i have got a number of responses one is <clears throat> you have to one is uh, to remove this particular you know this particular these two this particular at least that is what the suggestion was roughly i uh, remove this particular uh, this this particular respondents data so if you remove that particular respondents data then what will happen is you will lose lose out on the other data on data on the other variables also so that is not a very good option. That is one option, one suggestion way. The other suggestion is drop this particular variable. That, of course, we all agree that we should not do it. The third suggestion was you put zero here. OK, now why zero? Why not 10? And why not 100? So you have all those, all those questions. The fourth suggestion is 
that you leave those cells as blank. That has certain pitfalls. I'm not, I'll not go, I'll need 10 minutes time to explain. So I will, I don't have time. So don't do that. Okay, so what SPSS suggests is, if you have a blank data, if you have a cell where there is no data blank, okay, so you code it as a missing value. So you don't leave the data, you know, uh, the, the cell empty. It will have something, but it will have a code for a code which will indicate that it is missing. So I'll tell you, I'll show you what I mean. Uh, yes. So this is that, uh, you know, IHDS database which has been circulated to you. Can you see here, there are a lot, all these, uh, this particular, uh, can you see here, this COPC is what we were discussing, monthly consumption per capita. Uh, now this missing here, they have written something. So let me click here and show you. Uh, so they have said that this minus seven up to minus one, any data, if I write, then it is negative, then it is missing. Now you will still be confused about what this is. Okay, now let me show you something else. Just a minute. This is a very long database. Just a minute, I think I have it here. Ah, can you see here? If the you know collected data is inconsistent with the you know other records of that particular other data collected on that particular respondent then they're coding it as minus seven inconsistent if the collected data means whatever the data collectors has written if it is given a value which is out of range so it is coded as minus six otherwise this is a valid data but it should be skipped so that way so can you see that these are all codes given minus seven minus six minus five all this valid skip and valid blank okay up to minus one and then because all these are actually you know data which is missing not available so what they do is they code it here and then in missing they write this way from minus seven to minus one you know, any any value minus seven to minus one for this particular database for this particular variable should be treated as missing by the database so what it will mean is whenever the data whenever the software is doing any analysis with this particular soft with this particular variable some vaccination not received this variable then what will happen is all those from minus seven to minus one data that part those cells it will simply ignore i will not spend time more on this because i have a lot of other things to discuss the important point that i'm trying to make is in this particular case where we have what is that uh, where we have two data missing so you must give up, it is advisable. I won't say you must because the software will work even if you don't declare a missing variable, but it is advisable that you give a code for a missing variable and you enter that code. So like here, we have used this. Uh, so here, yes, we have used, you know, you remember zero for expired and one for censored. So we either than these two, I can use any other code. So let's say I use I go to missing, and here declare that a uh, discrete values missing values. I uh, here I will declare nine, and then press OK. So what will happen now is in you know wherever there is a missing, some data is missing with regard to the variable called status, right? I shall enter nine. So that cell will not remain empty. And empty cells means you know you could have other complications. Okay, that is what it means. Now, if it is very complicated, then you know uh, uh, you'll have to pardon me because I will not have time to, uh, you know, explain more of this. So basically, what we have, uh, what I have tried to explain is so far is I have these four. Uh, I have discussed these five types of variables. All are of different types. Uh, each of them have some peculiarity or characteristics, new characteristics of its own, uh, and then we have uh, gone to 
variable view and, and, and declare the characteristics of these variables. Next, the immediate question is how to enter data. So for entering data, you will have to click on data view. You remember whatever I had shown in the first. Uh, uh, yes, can you see? Yes. This is step number two. So important thing is after, you know, from step number, we have finished step number one and we have gone to step number two. But please don't bother too much. Of about what is step one and what is step two because from one start with one then go to two and then you still feel later on that some other way they still need to be entered then when necessary that is the beauty of SVSS. you can do it anyway so therefore now what we shall have to do is we shall have to then go to data view right and then you can see now the variable names are here and are all written here okay variable names so okay so now, now the entering data is not difficult. The first, uh, you can just have to use the keyboard. So I come here. The first patient has ID number one. So I simply type on the keyboard one, then age. Now, what was the age of the first patient? Age of the first patient was 63, and he was a male. OK? So first patient is 63, and gender. Gender. Now here, see, remembering the codes is always an issue. What is the code, especially if you have 500, 600 variables? So SPSS, you know, gives you a simple way. The simple way is this way: you go to view. Huh? Remember this, huh? You go to view, and can you see that there is something called value levels here? Huh? Value levels. So in that, okay, and ensure that these value levels box is checked on. Okay, so uh, view this one value level. Now you see this is not checked, so it has to be checked. So I will click on this. And get it checked. So now it is checked. Value levels box is checked. Okay. Now if the value levels box is checked, that then you don't need to remember the codes because, for example, gender. We had declared values. You remember M and M. So you simply have to click here, double click, and then this, you know, the two value levels that we had declared, the value levels will appear. So now data entry becomes easy. You don't have to remember whether it was M or F or whether it was 0, 1 or either it was 10, 20, nothing. Because what you, whatever it may be there, but here the uh, the value levels will appear. So male, female will appear. Okay. And and in similarly for case, in case of status also, uh, there were two codes, no? Z, uh, one, 0 and 1, we had said. Again, difficult to remember which one is what. So therefore, if you use this value levels box, then this expired and sensor, these are two values, these two will appear. And then whatever applies that you have to choose. One part. Uh, okay. Now you will ask me that for this particular, uh, for the first patient, you can see there. Uh, for the first patient, And, and the second patient, right? The status was that you can see that status was not known, unknown. So that data is missing. So how is that missing data enter? So you will remember that we have to set the code nine for missing. Okay. So what has to be done is very simple. So go there and, and here just press nine. Okay. So yes. So it will register as nine. And when any analysis is done, you buy the software for the variable called status. It will immediately say. You know, uh, it will immediately say uh, it will not use this particular cell. That is what is important. Achha. I'm sorry if I had to rush through because, uh, you know, uh, uh, there's not much time. Now I'll have to go to the second part. We already, we just have uh, about half an hour's time or maybe. I hope you don't mind if I extend it by 15 minutes. Will it be? No problem, sir. Huh. Uh, now for the organizers, I do not know. If the organizers, yes, if someone is there from the organizers, no issue, sir. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Because I will not finish otherwise. Okay, so, uh, so yes. To, just to conclude the first part. So, uh, you know, whenever you have to create a SPSS database, firstly you have to go to click on variable view. Once you have clicked on variable view, you have to enter the characteristics of the variables, just as I have done. And after you have finished entering the characteristics of the variables, you have to click on what? You have to click on data view. Uh, data view and in data view you simply have to use the keyboard to enter the data that is what is important that is what you must all realize that is part one and the second part is in order to make data entry easier for variables which have, have 
for which we have entered a code. So there you should ensure that you go to view and ensure that this value levels box is checked. Okay, just do write it down. Uh, this is very important. If this value levels box is checked, then the rest of it, then the value, uh, uh, the codes, not the codes, but the labels will appear. Okay, once those labels appear, then it becomes easy to get enter it. And just in case, if you remove that, then the codes appear. Like if I remove these value levels here, can you see here now? I've removed the value level, so now it is displaying F. Okay, either way. <clears throat> So yeah, so I'll I'll stop with the first part of this and go to the next part. At this point of time, yes, I'll give you you know thirty seconds time if you have anything to ask or any clarifications to seek. I know thirty seconds is inadequate, but yes, we don't have much time. Yeah. Just in case you have anything to ask, especially I'm looking for questions. From those who are trying to learn this software from a scratch, and you know they are beginners, and those who have uh, been using this software for some time, even they might have issues. What is the question? How to make a table of more than three variables? We'll learn that. What is the meaning of string exactly? So string is you know any combination of characters. So you have characters A, B, C, D. You know these are all characters, or maybe underscore is also a string. <coughs> So that is what is a string. So if you have number again, you know this again can take a lot of time. Uh, that can to make life difficult. Uh, you know you can have numbers also appearing as strings. But please don't you know get into all that now. Just take it from me the simple definition, simplest definition. If you have numbers one, two, three, four, twenty-five, twenty-six, etc., where these numbers measure something, so that is numeric. Uh, and uh, if uh, you have you are using codes. Like uh, you know, male M for male, F for female, etc., and all that. Those are strings. Even one for male and two for female is also a string. But if you are getting confused, how one is a string at the same time it is also numeric, then I'll advise you not to try that now. Take it that use it this way: one, two, three, four, any number minus one, minus five, uh, fifty-six, one million, etc., being the measure of something, is a is an is numeric, and A, B, C, D. Or A B A A C A B B D etc. All these are strings. Just take it from me that much. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, don't make life complicated. Life itself is enormously complicated these days. In any case. Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, the the in uh, data view uh, at the gender part, uh, I'm exactly following your uh, way. But the F and the female for the F for the female and M for the male is not coming in my data view. I don't know what's the reason. Ah, it one reason why it could uh, yes, you know, troubleshooting is important. Can you check whether you have declared that variable as string? It may be numeric. Go to variable view and check. No, it's it's string, gender string. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I didn't label it, but uh, just give value. Uh, ah, then, female in. Ah, then you label that. Label that. No, no, I, I did, sir. The values I give. Uh, F for female and M for male, but uh, is it, the the checkbox is, is not coming like F and uh, female and male in the yeah. Is it appearing the way, is it appearing the way it is on your screen now? Yes, sir. Exactly the same. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now you can come to data view, and your yes. And uh, what is appearing? Does it, is does F M F appear or? What does it appear? Or F E M A L E? What is it appearing? No, no, it's empty. It's nothing. Uh, is on the gender. Portion. Oh, gender. No, you will have to enter data. You know, you will have to enter data. Okay. So, huh, so go to view, and then value levels box. You check. Okay. Okay. And then you double click. So you will have this, uh, you know, pull down menu. Then so it will enter. You, yeah. Where should I go to the data? Ah, the, this is where. See, I'll say that again. Okay, wait. Let just wait. I will end, I'll remove, delete this, and then yeah. Okay. So you know. So just look at the screen now. This is absolutely blank. Yes, okay. sir. Now, yes. So now suppose we have finished variable view. We have now come to data view. Now we are to enter data. Now you go to the first cell. 
remember this is for the first case first case means first record that is the first respondent now here what was the data like you see uh, the patient here here uh, so patient id is 1 his age is 60 and this is a male okay so let me at least this much so patient id number is 1 so i click on this cell and then on the keyboard press 1 can you try yes sir uh, has it appeared one yes sir yeah go to the next cell age click click on that a click on that cell yeah his age was 60 so just on the on the keyboard type 60 that's it yes sir uh, done then the next one is gender yes sir okay now you, uh, you know, double click double click there and then this pull down menu will appear no, it's not uh, here. It's not coming female or male. It is not coming because you should you should go to view and this value levels box should be checked. Try that. There, there must be a tick mark with the value levels box. No, it's okay, sir. Thank you so much. It's clear now. It is clear now, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. For me, is more uh, you know what uh, what I look forward is uh, people uh, people you know following and doing it on their machine so that uh, they clear their doubts and then that is what is actually gives me satisfaction. That is nice nice of you to have explained your issue and then nice of it is also even better that you have sorted it out. That's nice. Even though we are not face to face. <laughs> By the way, where are you speaking from? Okay, okay. Uh, you can write on the on the on the on the chat box. Yes, where are you? Where are you located? Yeah. Okay, so now I will go to the you know second part. So second part of my of my lecture is this way. Oh, Kabul. Oh, that's very far away. Acha, acha. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Okay, so second part of my lecture. This second part of my lecture is I have this. Uh, uh, you know this uh, database which has been emailed to you now i have already told you this this is this ihds on the top left hand corner you can see that name ihds that stands for india human development survey freely available as i said to anyone who is interested <coughs> uh, you don't have to pay anything Achha. and uh, yes now this this database is of course is very large as i said 900 plus variables and more than one lakh uh, cases and i have only given you a five percent sample of this because otherwise the file will be too heavy to be able to uh, you know transport over email so it's not possible otherwise okay now in this one we will try some things we'll try to learn certain things yeah uh, uh, using this database so basically whatever we did learned in the first part so that is how to create a database that is what we have done and once the database is created, then the next part is about how to analyze. So that is what the, I mean, most of the, this workshop is, is all about. You will have this 15 days workshop. You will learn a lot of things, how to analyze data. I'll give you, you know, I'll, I'll tell you about a few things about this analysis part itself, because you can, uh, because there are so many ways to analyze uh, statistical methods, the non-statistical methods, many ways. Okay. So, uh, so I, uh, do I take it that all of you have this database on your machines, at least those of you who have the machines and the software installed along with you? Can you open up the software? Just put it on the, uh, yes, 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 on the chat box, yes. Those of you who have done it, uh, just write yes, done, or maybe done or whatever. Yeah, so I have two yes. Uh, okay, fine, three, done, okay, fine. I hope the others also have got it done. Very nice. Okay, now what shall we do? Yes, okay, fine. Thanks. Oh, that is nice. Yeah. Now, what shall we do? What we shall do is this. I have got many exercises, but of course, we don't have time for any of the or most of these. But some of these we shall try. Now, yes. Can you see? I'm trying to increase the size. Yeah. Ah, so we'll try this. Huh? So uh, find the. So this is the question we'll take up. How to find the mean, median, standard deviation of monthly per capita consumption? Right. Has it been? Has this been discussed yesterday? Yes or no? On the chat box, quickly. How to find mean or me measures of central tendency, measures of dispersion, measures of location? Has it been discussed yesterday? Because that is the basics, basic of little bit. Okay, a little. Okay. 
Okay, so then I will let, let me explain. Yeah, because whenever so once your database is ready, then you know you first begin by describing the variables. Okay, so once your once your uh, once your database is ready, you begin by describing the variables. Uh, wait. Okay, and you always begin with uh, uh, begin with uh, begin with this. You know, you try to describe each of the variables. That is the first thing that you do. Then you look for you know relationships between variables, relationships within variables, etc., and all that. So you describe the variables. And when you are trying to describe the variables, variables are broadly of two types, as we had discussed earlier. Now, one is categorical, that is nominal or ordinal, and the other one is scale. Okay. Achha. If you are new to statistics or data analysis, it makes make sense either to write it down or use your camera and quick, click a quick photograph. So that, yeah, because I don't have time, I, won't, I can't put it on the screen for a longer time. Right. So, descriptive analysis. So, in case of uh, categorical data, so where the data is in categories, nominal and ordinal. So then uh, this has to be, you know, the basic thing that you start with is frequency distribution, if the data is nominal or ordinal. Okay. And also you can try graphs. So pie graphs, bar charts, et cetera, et cetera. The whole, there is a whole thing. You know. And in case the variable is scale, uh, in case the variable is scale, then you do use those, you find those usual measures of central tendency, measures of dispersion, measures of location, all that. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah. So in case of, for, so for scale variables, uh, for scale variables, the basic descriptive statistics, the basic descriptive statistics include these. Okay. These are very basic, very basic. Okay. So again, you know, if you are new to data analysis, quickly. If you are new to data analysis, quickly. Yeah. Okay. So this, so we have to learn how to, uh, you know, uh, there are you you can have lots of other things also. Those who are seasoned data analysts or statisticians, they will tell you that there is more to central tendency, many other measures of dispersion. All that is there. Okay. But once we learn, uh, you know, my whole, this whole uh, workshop of 15 days is basically to introduce you to the software so that you can pick it up from there when you go back to your workplaces. Okay. So we, so, uh, so SPSS is not difficult to learn. It's, uh, it is not at all difficult. Only important thing is initially you must have an orientation because, you know, you must be, you must not see Greek and Latin when you open up the software. Once that part, that obstacle is, is, you know, gone past, then the rest of things are easy because it is, it follows the software follows more or less a similar method. That is one part. And if you have a net link, then the software also will teach you lots of things because it has a very good help facility. And the, th and the third thing, which is very important is, you know, in Google search, in the Google search box, you try SPSS tutorials on any topic. It has fantastic links. Whatever I am discussing here or whatever the other resource persons will be discussing, it is all there. It is just that you have to have time and the patience to look at, to scan through each of, each of those links and you will get what you, you know, get what you want, what you are looking for. That much I can tell you. Enormous resources on the net, but you must, as I said, you, it, is, you know, it is not pre-packaged. So you must have the patience to be able to understand. Okay, that is what is important. Uh, to, to be able to go through those links and find out which one actually is the one that you are looking for. So yeah, so coming back to this, if you have a scale variable, then uh, these are the basic descriptive statistics, central tendency, then measures of dispersion, measures of location. Now, please don't ask me what is a variance, how does it differ from standard deviation, etc. and all that, then it becomes a statistics class. And what is quartile, you know, etc. and all that, that is different. So that for that, you will have to read. But these are the important things. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, and we will have to learn in how to determine this in the software. That is what is our whole purpose. Okay. So what was the question that I was taking this one? So find the mean, median, and standard deviation of monthly per capita consumption. Okay. Monthly per capita. It should be monthly per capita consumption. Now, this is now you, when you are using, see, yes. Uh, when you are using a secondary database, this is a difficult thing. You see, the secondary database someone else might have, someone else would have created. Now, and when someone else had created, he did not, he or she did not have your requirements in view. 
he or she had a, had some objective of his own and accordingly might have created variables according to you know that line of thinking so therefore for if you have to use the secondary database for your purpose you will have to search for you know what and search for uh, whatever you are looking for so if you are looking at analyzing consumption right we are looking at analyzing analyzing consumption you know yes so this is that variable so you have so you can see here i was discussing all this so if you look at the names you cannot make out what these variables are supposed to supposed to supposed to be collect capturing data on okay it is not very difficult you know like as i said the copc itself it does not give you a hint that this actually is about monthly consumption per capita it does not tell you then if you look at the next one group s whatever groups s a this is about the caste and religion eight categories of caste and religion so the name does not tell you anything so you will have to not look at name but you will have to look at the labels column and try to locate the variable which is of interest to your research okay a variable which is of interest to your research so that is a painful thing to do i must say painful in the sense that it is troublesome it is time consuming that's not otherwise not physically painful i mean you know intellectually painful that's all uh, now you look at this so this is the question that i was uh, addressing so it is about monthly per capita consumption mean median and standard deviation so i have to first locate the variable where this month which captures this monthly per capita consumption <coughs> ah, monthly per capita consumption now wait yes yes so that variable is here this one can you see can those of you who have the software installed uh, in your laptops or desktops wherever you are working you can click here this is hh19 that should be some serial number in the uh, in the in the questionnaire okay hh1912 uh, some serial number but for us the next part is important monthly per capita monthly consumption per capita right Achha. so now that we have identified the variable remember this variable is this one hh1912 okay now you will have to know how to uh, compute mean variance standard deviation etc so the path is this way you know you i should write it down write it down quickly yes 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 ha ah, quickly if you are one if you are yes either you want to write it down or take a photograph or whatever right so let us start so if you want to find mean if you want to find variance standard deviation then analyze descriptive statistics descriptive as i said you will have to pardon me i won't have time to explain what is mean what is variance what is standard deviation no time because i'll only give tell you about the uh, how to get it done so i have given you the path so path is analyze then descriptive statistics and then descriptive Huh? Analyze descriptive statistics. Descriptive. So click on analyze, then click on descriptive statistics, and then click on descriptives. Okay, right? Descriptives. Now that I have done that, huh? click on descriptives. Once I have done that, right? Now for beginners, I always advise that you must click on reset button. Click on reset button. That will clear all your previous settings. All your previous settings are now cleared. Right <clears throat> now, you will have now see there are two two boxes here. You have this left box. This left box contains the name contains the variable. This is the variable list. Now this is you will you if you look at this you will find you will notice that these are the labels of the variables. Okay, left hand side and the right hand side there is an empty box. So this empty box should contain the variables on which you need some analysis. That is what you have to do. Now. uh where is this now so i have to find out where is that hh19 this one ah there it is one by one yes so this one hh1912 monthly per capita income if you um, just put your cursor there it will be displayed monthly consumption per capita uh, if you if you are doing it on your machine 
quick just uh, put your cursor over this firstly left click on this cell uh, on not on this cell on this variable and then leave your cursor there it will appear monthly per capita consumption okay once this is done then you have to press on this uh, you know what is this called uh this button arrow button okay and so it will go there so now it means that the software will give you analysis with regard to this on this uh, on this right <coughs> okay and suppose you know you make a wrong selection suppose you are interested in this and you have also for some reason your hands straight and you know you have also pushed in this one suppose uh, suppose it has happened so now that is so you you want to remove this it's not difficult sps is very easy so you click whatever you want to remove and you now see the arrow is pointing the other way around the arrow is pointing the other way around so the you can uh, click on uh, uh, click on this arrow now and now it will move so now it is done it is there it has moved. so you can see now so this software is as i said just the initial uh, initially you need some help uh, and then uh, you know you can pick up on your own so i shall go over whatever i have done again so as i had showed you hmm, you can see the first the path is this one the path is analyzed descriptive statistics descriptive okay hmm. <clears throat> right so i have done this analyze then descriptive statistics and then descriptives okay that has to be done then you will have to scroll down and locate that particular variable this is painful as i said you have to be very careful Yes, so here it is, HH1912. So, and left click, so this one gets selected. There it is, huh? left click and it is selected. And then click on this arrow and it goes in. Hmm? So this is how we have to select a variable. Now this box contains a variable and the analysis will be with respect to this variable. And here I press on options. Okay, now I have to press on options. So all of you who have the software also press on options options right and now you have all these boxes now it is easy so whatever you require you just check those boxes so i want mean i want standard deviation i want variance let's say okay these are mean. so uh, these are all there suppose that this minimum and maximum i don't need or if you want if you want you can also keep those huh? and then press continue hmm? then press continue Press continue and press OK. You are done. It is so easy. Now, can you see here this one? Hmm? Those of you who have the software, you can check on your machines. The variable, uh, the label is this label has been has been uh, has been displayed. Monthly consumption per capita and uh, and uh, what does it all show hmm. firstly there is a this capital n capital n is the number of cases that means the number of records of data okay that has that has been analyzed so 2075 as i told you this is only five percent of the entire data set database so the five percent is this 2075 right? <coughs> so the entire thing will be at one lakh plus and for this, what is the mean monthly consumption per capita? 939.74. And yeah, and um, this is the standard deviation. This is the variance. And yes, you can see someone is, uh, is the minimum monthly consumption per capita is only 83. So, some, so you can see these are the outliers. Not this can this should not be an outlier. I mean, this may not be an outlier. Outlier, the whole idea is different. Someone is extremely impoverished. That is what it shows. And someone is eating too much. Obese, perhaps. 11609. Okay. <clears throat> now, obviously, now you see when this monthly consumption per capita is written in the software, in the database, they have not indicated the unit, whether this is in rupees or whether this is in 
kilograms or grams or calories or what is not written. So it is a little difficult to, you know, to make sense of what this 939 indicates. That is the point I was trying to make when I was discussing about, uh, you know, weight. When I wrote weight in kilograms, because you must, these weights are, uh, these units of measurements are important. Here the units of measurement, unit of measurement is, is not given in the, uh, as in the ISDS database. You can see it is not given. It's not given. So we do not know what it means. So you might, so at least in this database, it is not there. You might have to read the literature. Literature meaning the uh, the uh, the explanations which sub, which go with the along with the uh, questionnaire. So to understand what what is the unit. But from the software itself, it is not uh, clear. And therefore, to make to interpret this whether this is high or low or whatever, not possible. But anyway, now we are not learning all that. We are learning the software. So what I have already explained is. Uh, how to find the mean standard deviation variance of this variable called monthly per capita. Now, what I will add, it, uh, has it been understood? Yes or no on the this thing? Uh, can you find, uh, if you are required to find mean standard deviation and variance, can you do it? Yes. Okay. Uh, what about others? Especially those who have no exposure, who have had no exposure. Yes. Uh, others? Hmm? Okay. Fine. So let me see whether you can actually do it. So I'll give you a question. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 quickly. So find the mean. Uh, mean. Yes, again, do the same thing for this one, for this variable. Mean, you know, mean, not median, median we have learned, learned, we learned that. So only the mean and standard deviation and variance for this other variable, HH4, 2.0, N in HH, means number in household. This N, it's a number of persons in a household, in the household of the respondent. Okay, so find that quickly. Let me see if you can do it. So... Analyze descriptive statistics, descriptives, and then firstly, you must reset. That is what I always advise. So you reset, click on reset, hmm? <clears throat> reset, then locate that variable. Where is that? This one, this one, HH4 2.0 N in HH. This one, left click, okay, left click, and it's there. And then click on this one, this arrow button, it will go inside. Ah. Yeah, it has gone inside. And then in the options, you choose mean, standard deviation, and variance. That is what we wanted. Hmm? Yes. And then, yeah, and then press continue. And then press OK and tell me whether you are getting your results. Can you, are you getting can, are you getting this table? That is what I'm interested to know. If you are getting it, say yes. <coughs> yes, sir. Hmm. Okay. What about others? This gentleman from Kabul. Yes. Are you getting it? Yes, sir. It's very clear for me. I am. I will show the result. Yeah. Okay. So this is done. Now, okay. Now uh, we'll do the other part. We have not learned how to compute median. Huh? This one, uh, median, quart, uh, median, then there will be quartiles. Median, quartiles, 20th and 90th percentile. So we'll learn how to do that. Uh, quickly, if you are writing that question, write or that way if you want to take a photograph quickly because we don't have time.
sir uh, for a new the task you have given for that uh, we just have to search yeah. from the analyze no. part uh, means yeah i'll i'll for that okay. so for for median it is this way uh yes the path is analyze descriptive frequent descriptives and then frequencies but this way with display frequencies box turned off this is the path Okay. So analyze descriptives frequencies. Okay, remember frequencies. Now again select the variable the same way. Number in the family. This one. Number in the household and then push it inside hmm? push it inside okay and this box important display frequency table this has to be turned off okay so if it is already turned off then there is nothing to be done otherwise just as in my case you see you can see the tick mark uh, there is a tick mark here so click on the tick mark and it will disappear and the moment it disappears the, the software will give you a warning that it has disappeared so you agree to it you say yes uh, okay that's all so simply click ok on this so what have we done i shall reset and show that again uh, i have selected that particular variable yes number in the household push that inside hmm? push that inside then this display frequency table box should be turned off then there will be a message which you say yes mm, and then go to statistics this particular box called statistics click on this box statistics box mm. now you see all that is available so you can determine median that is what we wanted mean also can be determined in this this method so it can be done and then we wanted what we wanted quartiles so that quartiles box has to be turned on right and we wanted two percentiles Two percentile, twentieth percentile. So you click on percentile, write twenty here. Twenty, and then click on add. It's very similar to that. Huh? Very similar to value levels. Click add, and then percentiles. Percentiles is ninety. Again, click add because we wanted the ninetieth, twentieth percentile and the ninetieth percentile. And then press continue. Press continue. Okay. Press continue. And then press OK. That's all. Now you can see here that it is displayed. So for this variable valid, 20778 cells of data have been analyzed. There is no missing data. The mean number of persons per household is 5.14. So on the average in India, you have 5.14 number of persons in a household the median is five so it is more or less same and the 20th percentile is three which essentially means that 20 percent of the households only 20 percent have a small family our small family that is number of persons in the household is only three three or less only 20 percent 25 percent of the households are four or less right and median median is 50 so half of the households have number of persons in the family five and the you know 75 percent of the households have six and 90 percent of the household have eight or fewer number of members uh, uh, members in the uh, in the household so that is what is analysis all about so have all of you been able to get this table uh, if it if you have got it then on the chat box yes huh? ah, great what about others? Hmm. Hmm. 
Hmm. Okay. Mm. Okay, fine. Now, <clears throat> yeah, we'll try something. Uh, we'll try something different. Huh? Suppose, <clears throat> huh? right? Where is that? Yeah. So now this is that. This is another variable. H H three, uh, whatever. Mm. Mm. Now, this is a categorical variable. You can see here, huh? this has been you know, classified as nominal, this one. This variable, huh? classical. Now, for this one, the, the other two variables that we have done just now, that we have analyzed just now, one is monthly per capita. So that is of the type scale, you can see here. Huh? That is of the type scale. And the other one that we did was number of persons in the household, that also is of the type scale. So for scale variables, I have told you, uh, basic descriptive statistics is mean, median, you know, all that, variance, uh, you know, quartiles, etc. And for uh, what is that called? For <clears throat> for categorical variables like this one, caste, religion. Okay, then the basic this, the the basic analysis that you do is frequency distribution table. Now the question is, how do you do a frequency distribution table? So what is the question? The question is, the question is. Let me write it down. Let me write it down. Uh, obtain frequency distribution of this uh, of this variable. Okay, so this is what we shall do. So okay, obtain the frequency distribution of this variable. HH3 1.1315 cast religion, eight cats. Eight cat means possibly eight categories. Now the question is, how do you obtain frequency distribution table? How to obtain frequency distribution table? So the path is this one. Where is that? Where is that? Uh, where is it? Ah, ah, this one. Ah, yeah, write this. Write this part. To, to construct a frequency distribution table, the path is analyze descriptive statistics frequencies. But important, we display frequencies tables box turned on. That is most important. Display frequency and display tables box turned on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. So we'll do that. Huh? Uh, where is that? Where is that? Where is that? Hmm. Okay. So analyze descriptive statistics frequencies. Now we shall have to go there. Analyze descriptive statistics frequencies. Frequencies, right? And then I always, as I said, always begin with reset. So all your previous settings are clear. Hmm? Clear. <clears throat> okay. Then for this variable, this one H H three one point one three one five cast religion etc. So this variable is selected and it is pushed inside. Huh? So this is the analysis, uh, the list of selected variables, the variables on which we need analysis. Hmm. And uh, this display frequency tables box is turned, has to be turned on, huh? it has to remain turned on. Okay, and then simply press OK. It is always simple as that. Huh? Press OK, and you get what you want. So there you are. So there are so many Brahmin, so many high caste, so many OBC, Dalit, Adivasi, Muslim, Sikh, Jain, etc. So you have a total of 2078 because this is only 5% of the entire thing. 
so this is it so this is the frequency distribution this is in terms of percentages right and then there's something called valid person there's something called cumulative person yes yeah so those of you who are who have the software yes have you got this on your machines yes sir yeah okay what about others yes yes sir got it i ah, got it right acha is there any yeah do you have any questions ha huh? no questions right okay then i will ask you a question ha huh? <laughs> have you noticed that uh, there are two columns here one is this percent column and the other one is the valid percent column do you notice that in this case both of them are equal i mean they are exactly the same and if it is exactly the same why should there be a separate column called valid person that is a question that you must address okay answer now the answer is this way uh, you will have to remember whatever i was uh, you know discussing about missing values now in this particular variable there are no missing values or no missing now had there been some missing then there would have been a difference between these two so valid person would be the the percentage distribution after removing sweeping out the missing cases so missing data we do not know whether which group which uh, category they would belong to so in case uh, some there is some missing data then this the software uses the valid then you must use the valid person because that is what is more relevant okay so that is why this of the software gives you two uh, sort of person is one is this percent other one is this valid person hmm. <laughs> that is the reason why we have this acha okay acha then uh, again because i have almost i have already overshot by 15 minutes i want to round up i had two other things to do one is about this chi square test uh, chi square I, of course someone else will also uh, speak about chi square uh, so uh, you know he will speak about some parametric test p test chi square test etc so you will have a detailed discussion there and the other one and the last thing that i had to discuss was about mcnamara's test again mcnamara's test is related to chi square test uh, related in the sense that if you do chi square and then you come to mcnamara's test okay now what is that what is that? uh so let me show you something uh uh so suppose you know yes you know yes as i said when you are doing analysis analyzing data you first begin with uh you know descript uh, you know you describe the variables and then you look for associations various types of associations association between two variables more than two variables classifications etc etc trends lots of things okay so in this particular example uh, this particular question this is you examine association between below poverty line okay that is a below poverty line variable with a caste category okay association between caste category and below poverty line so basically the respondents are, are you know the respondents are classified into whether they are below or above poverty line and then their caste is also noted so if you try an association between these two it will tell you whether this you know you have certain Uh, categories of caste where the number of rather the percentage of people below poverty line are higher if it is not that way I mean, all the caste categories have the same sort of distribution of poverty line poverty then of course poverty is sort of with regard to caste it is secular with regard to caste there is no difference but if there are differences then you know it could indicate that well certain caste categories have more fewer people so how to do this this is below poverty line and caste category now let me show this because i am terribly out of time so where is this thing called uh, below poverty line i have to find that out this yes. okay. yeah yes this one can you see this very below poverty line okay below poverty line so if i do a simple frequency distribution table of this below poverty line i do let me do this first ha huh? and give me some idea about what this below poverty line thing is very good below poverty line that is how your analysis usually proceeds so below poverty line i do a frequency distribution so let me see how many of them 
Ah. Ah, now you can see here. I can explain that you know that valid and percent, valid and per, uh, valid percent and percent. So uh, total of two seven eight. So out of this, uh, below forward line, no is one six eight nine. So eighty one point three percent of the respondents are not below forward line. Three hundred eighty six. It is eighteen point six percent of the respondents are below forward line. Okay. The so total is this, and there are three for three of the respondents out of this two zero seven eight. It is not indicated. It is missing. So data is missing. So if you calculate this way, okay. So this is your frequency. This is your percentage distribution. Most of the people are not below eighty percent. Eighty one point three percent are not below forward line. Eighteen point six are below. Okay. But you do not know where these three lie. You know whether they are below or over. This number is small. It will not make a huge difference. But had this been let's say thirty, then it would have made a lot of difference. So. In valid difference, in valid difference, what they do is they remove this. Okay, so the total is taken as two zero seven five, not two zero seven. So with this two zero seven five as the total, then they recalculate the number of you know percentage of the categories. So you can see that there is a slight change here, largely because this is our number is only three. So that is the reason why you know the if you have missing data, then you must always look for a valid person, not that. And this is the cumulative figures. acha so acha so we were trying to see and examine the association between below poverty line and caste so how do we do that so that is this way again i have to write it down if you want to write but i am so much out of time that uh, yes so this is the path so as for association ha huh? path again i actually have to i have to explain a lot uh you know uh, the both the variables have to be categorical only then this works uh, analyze descriptive statistics cross steps okay this is what has to be done remember the one variable is below poverty line so this is yes and no uh, so that is categorical the other one is about caste high caste low caste dalit adivasi etc and all uh, <coughs> so that also is categorical uh, so therefore uh, we are using this cross step so this is this way analyze descriptive statistics And then cross steps. Uh, if I had gone too fast, then it is here again. Analyze descriptive statistics and then cross steps. Right? Cross steps. So on the uh, on the rows, I can write this one. So let's say one of the variables. So, yes. So cast variable I select and I push it to the rows, and the other one is below poverty line. Where is that? Below poverty line that goes to the columns, okay. And uh, I have to choose the appropriate statistical test. The statistical test is chi square. Now, why is it chi square again? Is a big story. It will take time. <coughs> chi square, and then continue, and then okay. Now you can see here they give you a beautiful table. Yes. So you can see here, huh? So. This is the two-way table. You have tasks here. You have below poverty line. Yes, no here. And if you are exposed to statistics, you will know that there is a Pearson chi-square statistic. Now the p-value here is zero point zero zero zero. Now the p-point p-value is zero point zero zero zero. It means that the it is highly significant, which indicates that there is a very strong association between below poverty line and caste. Below poverty line and caste. Okay, that is what is the, the significance of the goal. Now, how do you know how now, now how do you know that there is some sort that is all that you know uh, below poverty line and caste this association. So for that you have to calculate the percentages. So percentages are also easy here. Everything is easy till you know. That's all. So you go to cells here and then you know you find out the uh, row percentage. Now let me show you what difference it makes. Then you will appreciate. It. Yes, yes. Okay. Now you can see for Brahmins, uh, only seven point five percent. This is high caste. Only seven point five percent are below poverty line. Ninety two point five percent are above poverty line. Whereas if you think of OBCs, then nineteen percent are below poverty line, and Eighty percent are above poverty line. So you can see that between Brahmins and OBC, or maybe Brahmin 
this one is even even start with adivasis about more than one third are below poverty line the rest are above poverty line so you can see that depending upon which caste you belong the probability of or the proportion of people uh, in a below poverty line would change so this is 92.5 to 7.5 this one is 64.9 to 35.1 and that is the reason why the statistical test also picks up that this relationship is uh, significant so therefore these two are not independent of each other <laughs> so this was about very briefly about chi square uh, he will of course pick up more on chi square and there is something else called mcnamara's test uh, which again is very similar except that in mcnamara's test both of these uh, you know this this way like this below poverty line has just two uh, two categories this one the other one also should have just two categories that is what this uh, yeah poverty line yeah is all about mm. uh, this is what is mcnamara's statistics again just so. Uh, so this is how it is. Suppose you have cases and you have controls, and uh, A are the pairs which have been exposed in the case as well as in control. B are the number of pairs which have been exposed in the case as well as control. C unexposed and control, etc. Then it will tell you whether these two are, you know, uh, these two are related, are associated. And uh, how to carry out the test is again. I'm very sorry that I have to rush through because no time. There is this method called non-parametric. Again, someone will discuss non-parametric, so maybe he will discuss it there. And then there are two related sim samples. So those two variables have to be selected and pushed here, and then you choose this McNamara's test and then press OK. That's all. So that's all. I say that. I think I should I should stop. Uh, you know, someone will discuss parametric tests and chi-square tests. It is there in the program schedule I have noted and someone will also discuss non-parametric case I'm sure it will be discussed in more detail but 